Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be part one of my June wrap up. Yes, that's right, I've had to split it into two again this month. I've managed to read 14 books. Um, I've had some good reads, I've had some okay reads, haven't had really bad reads, haven't had any five star reads either. Um, first off though, I want to apologise if you can hear rain in the background. Um, we're having a couple of rain and thunderstorms passing through my area at the moment and I am self-isolating so I have the window open as I'm filming this just to let a flow of fresh air in and actually with the rain coming down it's actually really quite nice. So without further ado let's actually talk about the books because this is going to be a long set of videos to film. The first book, as always, is Divided in Death by J.D. Robb. This is book 18 of her In Death series. And in this book, um, Reva Ewing is going to confront her husband and the woman that he has been cheating on her with. Only when she arrives, she finds that someone got there first. She has been framed for the murder and it then falls to Eve and Rourke and the rest of the team to find out what actually happened and to clear Reva's name because they know that she is definitely innocent. I enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't as great for me as it has been in previous months. I think that I'm just kind of starting to burn out on the series a little bit, which is something that I was afraid of when I picked them up um, at the beginning of 2020. Um, so I'm going to take a break from them for a couple of months and just come back to them hopefully feeling a bit fresher. Um, I'm certainly filming this at the beginning of July and I'm looking forward to the fact that I don't have to pick up one of these books this month. So that tells me that actually, yes, it is time to put the series down and concentrate on something else for a while. So I did enjoy it, like I say, it was a three star read. I didn't know who the killer was, I didn't get there until Eve and the rest of the team did. Uh, which is something that I really appreciate about J.D. Robb's writing. Sometimes with these books, they're too quick to give them away. Um, so I did enjoy it. And if you're thinking of starting out with this series, then I do recommend that you give them a go. So the next book that I finished was uh, the first book in a series of historical fiction murder mystery whodunit novels by Stephen Saylor. And this is Roman Blood. This is about a man called Gordanius, who is known as the Finder. And in this book, he is tasked with helping find evidence to clear the name of a man who is charged with murdering his own father. Uh, this book had all sorts of twists and turns. At first, I thought it was really slow going and I kind of struggled to connect with the characters or even figure out what the mystery was. But as things started to get revealed as the book went on, I really started to enjoy it a bit more and really started to, to get involved in what was happening and with the mystery that needed solving. And it did take me a little bit by surprise towards the end. Um, the character Gordanius puts himself in all sorts of perilous situations. So I did have to kind of get on board with that. It was a little bit frustrating um, towards the end. Um, but yes, I'm looking forward to reading it. It is the start of an entire series. So I'm looking forward to at some point picking up book two and exploring historical mystery fiction um, a bit more in depth. Book number three was The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis. And this was to um, continue my reread of the entire series. I wanted to try and finish this series this year, so this was also counting towards that. This is set in the fictional world of Narnia, and in this book, uh, Eustace, who was in the previous book, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, is called back to Narnia along with his friend, Jill. Uh, there has been um, a disappearance the prince who is entitled to the throne has disappeared and he needs to help find him and bring him back. So he and Jill and some others go on a quest across Narnia and underneath Narnia to try and find the lost prince and restore him to the throne. Um, again, really enjoyed it. I've read this book before as a child, but I didn't really remember reading it. I remember, I, I remember reading... Um, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I remember reading The Voyage of the Dawn Treader and Prince Caspian. I think because those are the ones that have actually been televised as well, which helps me remember. Um, but I do remember reading um, 
the the previous book um, as well. But the silver chair I really didn't re remember reading, so it was really quite fresh. I did enjoy it. Um, and again, I would recommend if you've got uh, quite an advanced nine to twelve year old reader, then these books are definitely for them. The next book that I finished, uh, book number four, was actually an audio book that I'd started in May. Um, I'm actually going to show you the physical copy because I do now have a physical copy for my shelves because I enjoyed it that much. And that is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is about a young woman, Alina Starkov, um, and it's based in the fictional world of Ravka, which I think is based on kind of like Eastern European slash Russian um, settings. And it's she has discovered that she has um, a magical power. She is a sun summoner. And because she is very rare, that means that she may be able to destroy a section of Ravka, which um, has split in two, called the Fold, which is just complete darkness. There are creatures inside there that eat humans if they try to travel across the Fold. Um, so she is then expected to destroy it. And it's about what happens with the people that she meets. Um, the magic system is called Grisha and she meets all of those um, people. She meets the uh, she meets a, a mysterious man called the Darkling um, who has some revelations about him. There's a bit of romance in here. I really enjoyed it um, so much so that like I say I picked up the actual physical copy and I have Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising as well because I want to continue the series very, very soon. I enjoyed it that much. Very good four star book, not quite a five star, but yes, I think the whole the series as a whole has a potential to be a high four star series. So I'm looking forward to picking up the rest of the books in the series. Book number five is a series completion and it is The Last Battle by C.S. Lewis. This is the final book in the Chronicles of Narnia series. Yes, I did actually manage to get on and read this one as well as The Silver Chair this month, which I'm really, really pleased about. Uh, it's um, about Narnia. Uh, again, Jill and Eustace have been called back to Narnia because there is a battle raging. There is a false Aslan who is telling Narnians um, that they have to give way to the Calamines uh, who are trying to invade and take over and it's about how Jill and Eustace have to thwart that uh, false Aslan and the false prophet. Um, this is the final book in the series so there will be no more after this um, I wasn't sad at the end of it. I didn't quite like how it ended. I thought it was a bit wishy-washy, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it was kind of a they all walk off into the sunset and happily ever after ending, which for this series of books, it just didn't fit for me. Um, but I enjoyed I enjoyed reading it. And again, like I said, with The Silver Chair, if you've got quite an advanced 9 to 12 year old reader, then I definitely put these series in their hands because I think they'd enjoy it. So the next book that I finished was a fantasy romance that I received from NetGalley in exchange for a uh, honest review um, in advance of the book being released. And this book is These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. I should point out if you're interested in reading this book, it is not released until the 20th of July. But from that date, you will be able to get your hands on a copy to read it for yourself. This book is, like I say, a fantasy romance. It's about Brie, who is a human, and her younger sister is captured by the king of the Unseelie Court. And her only hope is to travel to the Unseelie Court um, and try to rescue her. Uh, she does that, but she is then tasked with helping the Unseelie King to retrieve some artefacts from the Seelie Court. The only way she can do that is to pretend to be a potential bride for the Seelie Prince. She, from there she gets caught up in a bit of a love triangle because a band of Unseelie misfits try to help her and she becomes very attracted to the leader of that group. I really enjoyed this book. It didn't go down the route that I thought it would um, with a fantasy romance. In fact, there is no happy ending. Um, I should point that out to you. Uh, there's no happy ending, which I really quite liked. It was quite a different twist on our fantasy romance because there's always, you know, the happy ever after and good versus evil. And you know what? Nobody's good. Nobody's evil. 
everybody has shades of grey in this book and I really appreciated that because that is not something you see very often and I really like how Lexi Ryan uh, um, actually portrayed that throughout the story. So I do highly recommend it. Um, so if you like fantasy romance, it is uh, marketed for the young adult audience. So um, it is uh, there's um, no real steam involved in this book. So it is a fairly clean romance. But yes, it is um, a very good book. And I'm hoping if not more in this story, I'm hoping that there's more in this world because I would actually like to see Bree, Finn and Ronan get some kind of happy ever after, even if it's not together. And then the next book that I'm going to talk about is a series of short stories, an anthology that I picked up a few years ago now. And that's um, Embrace a Romance, Pets in Space 2. So, like I say, this is an anthology of short stories. They're all romance stories and they're all centred around um, groups of people who have a, an animal who helps them come together and ha find their happy ever afters. None of them really stood out to me. The only reason I bought it is because an author that I was reading at the time had a book in there, a short story in there, and I wanted to read that one. And I read that one at the time, so I didn't reread really that one this time round. None of the stories stood out for me. They're all quite short. Some of them were a little too short. Some of them didn't have enough information in them. Some of them were written really, really well. So it was a mixed bag, but I did really enjoy the experience of reading it um, because they were short stories. I didn't tend to just read one straight after the other. What I was doing is I was reading all the other books that I've talked about previously and then maybe I'd read a short story or two in between just to break them up so that it wasn't quite so so heavy on uh, on the romance um, in that way. But again, if you want something light and fun, they all of these were that and I would recommend it if you like your romance and like cute furry feathered things helping you find your happy ever after. So that was the first seven books that I finished. Um, like I say, this is going to be quite a long series of long video to film if I do it in one part. So that was just the first half of the books I read this month. So I'm going to do a part two to this and I will put that up probably in about a week's time when from when you're watching this. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and if not already, subscribe to the channel. I regularly put up videos at 6.30pm UK time on a Monday and occasionally there might be the odd bonus video thrown in as well. Um, so please go check my channel out and I will see you all again in the next video. Bye!